All right, I've been getting a ton of questions about audio recently. How do I record better audio? And then once I've recorded better audio, how do I then edit it in Premiere Pro to make it sound the best it can? That's what we're talking about today. Today's basically a beginner audio course. We're gonna go over three things that you should be doing while recording your audio, and then four really simple effects that you can put on your audio in Premiere Pro that, that make it sound much, much better. Although these four effects that are in Premiere Pro are also in things like Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. So again, these are the concepts of how to record, how to edit. I'll be working in Premiere Pro because that's what I work in, but you, you work in whatever program works best for you. And while you're going through this video, if you're like, wow, this is super helpful, hit that like button below. That is super helpful for me. All right, let's get your audio sounding better because I know it's it's so easy to get focused on the visuals of your video, to just stare at a screen and try to color grade and mess with things and tweak things in your camera to get the visuals looking better. But I've said on this channel so many times that if your audio is crap, your, your video is crap. Audio is as important as the visuals if not more important. So let's let's get your audio sounding good. And the very first thing to do to get your audio to sound the best it possibly can, and we've said this on the channel before as well, is get your microphone as close to your subject as possible. You cannot see in this shot, but the microphone, it is, it is right here on a C stand. It's right above my head, just out of frame. I set this frame up, I get it all ready, and then I move the C stand. Hang on, let me show you. So there it is there. Here is a, a C stand. The C stand is boomed over this workbench here. And the microphone again is super close to my mouth. And by doing that, by getting the microphone as close to my mouth as possible, it helps to hone in on my voice and cut out background noise, other noises that might be going on. There's actually a car going by right now but kind of hard to hear because again, the microphone is being tuned. It's being leveled to my voice. <laughs> Bring it. So again, number one is get this microphone, whatever microphone you're using, as close to your subject as possible. It's also why lav mics sound so good is because they're right under your subject's mouth. Those sound really good, but if you're using a boom like this, again, as close to your subject as possible. That's number one. Number two is to dial in your audio so that while your subject is speaking normally like this, your audio is falling between negative six and negative 12 dB. And I know that sounds crazy. Why, why would we be so low? It seems, seems like we wanna get that audio as close to zero as possible. You don't, not while you're recording at least. Because right now I'm, I'm watching my audio meter on my camera, which by the way, if you don't see your audio meter on the camera, dig into your settings on your camera so that you can actually see the audio as the subject talking, you can see the little meter bouncing with their voice and then just have them repeat something very normal. Just have them start talking like this. And again, make sure that you're between negative six and negative 12. Now, again, why? It's because people don't always talk at the same level all the time. They might be talking like this and then all of a sudden something happens and oh my gosh, they start yelling like this and they go, woo, and they get super loud. And if you're if you're normalized up around negative three or negative two, or you're, you're right on that edge, as soon as someone gets too loud, you're gonna peak. And with audio, if you peak, anything beyond that, it's just, it's gone. It's garbage, you can't get it back. If your audio peaks, you, you've lost that audio. So again, while out recording, we wanna make sure that we never hit that peak. We're never gonna hit zero. So to do that, we record between negative six and negative 12 dB. We see that our audio meter as someone's talking is falling right between there. Perfect. All right, so while recording in the field, number one is get the microphone as close to your subject as possible. Number two is make sure that while they're talking normally, their audio is falling between that negative six and negative 12 dB. And number three is to bring a pair of headphones with you. By putting these things on and listening to your audio as it's either being recorded or while you're testing it, while you're setting up. To make these videos, I always set my camera up, I get everything dialed like this. I put my microphone up here, I get that just leveled up and then I put these microphone on and then I put these headphones on and I walk through a few different things I just start talking very normally I'm looking at my levels but I'm also listening for little things that I might not be hearing in the room for instance I got a new mini fridge underneath here and now when I when I go for just pure room noise I can actually hear that refrigerator coming through the microphone. So things like that, that you wouldn't have picked up on, you wouldn't have realized that are coming through the microphone by putting headphones on and by listening to the room 
or while someone's talking, you might hear something that you did not hear just by being in the room. So number three is get a pair of headphones, plug them into your camera, and make sure that you at least listen to the room noise of where you're filming. I can't be wearing headphones while I'm recording these. That would, that would look silly to be constantly wearing headphones. So I set this whole thing up, I listen a little bit, and then I pop them off, and I just put them right back on my desk. Just out of frame. Okay, so you've done those three things. You've recorded your audio in the field. The next step is to bring it into Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you the four effects that I put on every single clip that I, that I ever put out. And to get some sample audio here, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor. If you guys are here looking for audio solutions, trying to make your audio sound better, you might also be interested in making your music sound better, which brings us to Epidemic Sound. They are the leader in YouTube music licensing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it, you want some background music, you want some cool intro music, you want some cool end cap music, you want some awesome epic B-roll music, Epidemic Sound is the one to go to. They're the best in the game, and there's a free trial at the first link in the description. Okay, that's our sample audio. I'm gonna pull that into Premiere Pro real quick. All right, we have our footage pulled into Premiere Pro. I have that clip cut out, chopped up just how I want it, and I've put it on the timeline. We're just gonna listen through it and see a few things as we listen through it. If you guys are here looking for audio solutions, so look at where the audio level is falling. As I'm talking, check out this meter on the right-hand side of the screen and look at where that meter is, is going brings us to Epidemic Sound. They are the leader in YouTube music licensing. So you'll see that I actually recorded a little low. We're a little bit lower than that negative six to negative 12. Often it was bouncing in that point, but kind of when I have more excitement in my voice, it was between negative 12 and negative six. And then when I talked normally just like this, I was really hitting negative 12 to negative 18. That's okay though, because again, we just don't want to be too hot. We don't want the microphone so hot that when we get excited or we talk too loud, we, we pee and we just lose that audio. So you'll see with the four effects, this will be worked out real simply. Now, one really interesting thing is that normally when you apply audio effects, you just drag them straight onto the clip, but we're not gonna do that right now because I'm filming this whole talking head setup. It's always gonna be this exact same audio for the entire video. I can actually apply my effects directly to the channel. So every single clip on that channel is gonna receive this effect instead of having to copy paste this effect to every single clip that I put on the timeline. So to do that right up here, we are looking for something called audio track mixer. So right up here, audio track mixer, this is where we're gonna put our effects. And you can see in here that we have A1, audio one, audio two, and audio three. That's the same that is down here. These tracks, the first track is audio one, second track is audio two, and third track is audio three. And to do this, we just click these little drop downs right here, and we can actually add our audio effects right here. So the very first one that we're gonna put on, again, because we recorded at negative six to negative 12, is Amplify. So we'll tap that on and the first one is Amplify. The second one that we're gonna put on, we're gonna go down to Filter and EQ and Parametric Equalizer. That's number two. Number three, back into Amplitude and Compression, we're gonna put on Dynamics. And then number four and the final one we're gonna put on is down to Noise Reduction and Restoration, we're gonna put on Denoise. So these are the four effects that are now on channel one. So any clip that I put on channel one is gonna receive these four effects. So it's, it's important that all of channel one now is just from this one setup. If I was to now go out and film something somewhere else, I would then put all of that audio on channel two because no matter how hard I try, the audio is gonna sound a little bit different from a sit down thing like this to if I went outside and filmed outside. So because I'm putting it on track one, this audio, everything that's filmed in this setup is gonna go on track one. All right, the next step is to do these four in order. So to do that, I then pull up Denoise and I click this little guy right there. It turns the effect off, click Dynamics, turn the effect off, Parametric Equalizer, so it doesn't matter so much, but we'll turn that effect off as well. All right, so now I'm gonna hit Amplify, and the first thing we're gonna do is try to pull our audio up as close to zero as possible. So we're gonna pull it all the way up so that as I'm listening to a piece of my audio, this normal kind of talking, it's hitting that like negative three, negative two, negative one, maybe even peaking a couple of times, but it's really, really pushed up towards that top end. And then back in here to make editing really simple, I like to find one part of the track that sounds pretty pretty even and kind of have a, a big chunk. And I'm gonna go to it on the timeline and hit I. That's gonna put an in point and then I'll let it play for a little bit, go down here and say something like right here. 
and I'm gonna hit an out point. Then in our toolbar here, in our program sequence, the toolbar, what I'm looking for is the loop playback. If you don't have this loop playback in this menu, there's a little plus sign right here. You click that, here's all the different button options that you have up here. You just grab them and you drag them in there and uh, boom, you'll have loop playback. So that's what we're gonna turn on. So now that I turn that on, my in point and my out point, when I hit play, it's gonna play all the way through and as soon as it gets to the end, it's just gonna go boop, back to the beginning. So I can actually listen to audio, listen to a specific section of audio over and over and over again as I start tweaking these dials. As I pull amplitude up and I mess with my parametric equalizer and I'm doing the different things in here, I'm listening to the same chunk of audio, which is super helpful to be able to dial it in just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this amplify, which is gonna pull up my amplify window here. Link sliders is on so that my right and left channel are being pulled up at the same amount. And then I'm just gonna hit play. And I'm gonna watch my meter on the right side and try to really get it up there, but not, not too hot. So we'll see here. They are the leader in YouTube music licensing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it. You want some background music. You want some cool intro music. So I'm going to settle with something around 12 dB. I like 12 dB. Again, we are peaking a little bit when we're at plus 12 dB, but, but we're going to mess with that later as well. Okay, and the next effect that we're going to work on is parametric equalizer. I almost do the exact same thing on every single video. I turn on the high pass. I set the gain fall up to 36 dB and I drag that high pass up to around 125-ish hertz. And you can see the hertz right there. So basically what I'm saying is that any audio that, that is being recorded, that it has been recorded, that falls below 125 hertz, I just want you to cut it out, which usually consists of things like droning, wind, or air conditioner, maybe tr some traffic in the background, things like that. Anything that's like rrr, that low hum, that'll get cut out by putting a high pass filter on there. We're saying anything higher than this may pass. It can be in the mix. And anything lower than this, we just want you to cut it off. That's what a high pass filter does. And then also usually within parametric equalizer, I'll grab our high point here. I'll shift this to kind of a, a sharp shelf and grab this guy. And somewhere around the 7K mark, I'll bump it just a tiny bit. Again, 1.3 dB, I'm not raising it a whole lot. All that's really doing is it's taking that higher end, that, that kind of crispiness of my vocals, and it's just making it a little sharper. So let's see if we can hear the difference before. If you guys are here looking for audio solutions, trying to make your audio sound better, you might also be interested in making your music sound better, which brings us to epidemic sound. So it's really subtle, but if you had something like an air conditioner or wind noise, things like that, that are really in the mix, you'll hear a big difference for when you cut off at 125 hertz or where you don't. All right, so we'll close out of that. The next one we're gonna go into is dynamics. This probably makes the biggest difference. Again, we'll make sure this effect is turned on. Two things we're gonna do in here is turn on our compressor and our limiter. And what a compressor is basically doing is it's taking our highs and our lows and it's and it's trying to squeeze them a little bit. So it's not so high and then so quiet and so high and so quiet. We're, we're trying to squeeze the whole mix into a narrower band that we can then raise up nice and tight to the top so it always stays loud or it always stays a consistent volume as opposed to being super loud at one moment and then super quiet the next moment. Then super loud again, we get rid of a lot of that and we compress it in, it's it's much easier to listen to. And to do that, we're just gonna work with this ratio. I usually pull this ratio slider up somewhere around 1.7. And then what you're gonna notice that this immediately does is it, it drops our gain. So we lose volume by doing this. And then to make up that volume, to get it back, we use our makeup dial here and we crank it back up. So I'm gonna hit play. I like I usually like about 1.7 on the ratio. I'll leave it there. I'll hit play and then again, I'm gonna look at my meter on the right hand side and use my makeup to try to get that audio back up around that negative two, negative one dB mark. Play here. Music licensing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it. You want some background music. You want some cool intro music. You want some cool end cap music. You want some, they are the leader in YouTube music licensing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it you want. All right, so it looks pretty good right around 7.2 dB on my makeup and my ratio is at 1.7. That sounds the best to me and it makes sure that I'm not peaking too much. Now, I have that limiter turned on at negative 1 dB. So my audio can now not go over negative 1 dB. It'll, it'll hit that mark and then it'll cut it off. So my audio won't peak because I have that limiter on, but I don't want to use the limiter. I don't want my audio to constantly be hitting that limiter. So I'm just watching it to see how often that little red light flashes 
inches on limiter. That means I'm peaking. And I'm using the makeup to try to get it close to it, but to make it not, not flash so much. I listened to it again and 6.3 dB actually looks a little bit better. I'm gonna stick with 6.3 dB. All right, and now finally, we're gonna go on to denoise. And I've talked about this effect before as well. It's, it's a really simple effect to denoise the, the roominess of a room. And same thing here, we are gonna hit play. We're gonna listen to it while we're dialing things in. It's just running through that same loop that we've selected the in and out point for. And usually I like denoise somewhere between 25-ish and 30-ish percent. That's usually good enough to get rid of room noise, but not so heavy that it starts distorting my voice. So same thing, we're gonna hit play and just start listening to it and move that slider around. If you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it. You want some background music, you want some cool intro music. All right, that actually sounded best at 20%. So just above 20%, I started noticing kind of a whir, whir, whir on my voice. So I bring that down, I bring it up, I bring it down, I listen to it, I hear that little point where it happens and boom, 20% was it. So now I'm gonna go back to my timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the in and out by right clicking on this part right here, clear in and out. And let's listen to that entire clip now with these four audio effects on. If you guys are here looking for audio solutions, trying to make your audio sound better, you might also be interested in making your music sound better, which brings us to Epidemic Sound. They are the leader in YouTube music licensing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you are looking to add music to it, you want some background music, you want some cool intro music, you want some cool end cap music, you want some awesome epic B-roll music, Epidemic Sound is the one to go to. They're the best in the game, and there's a free trial at the first link in the description. And that's it. Seven really simple, basic things that you can do right now when you start recording. Number one, get the microphone nice and close to your subject. Number two, make sure that when you're recording, you're falling between that negative six and negative 12 point. Number three, put on some headphones and listen to the room. Listen to actually what's being recorded. Have your subject talk and hear if they're popping, if something sounds weird in their voice, or, or maybe there's an echo because the microphone's at a weird angle. Then record everything, bring it into Premiere Pro, throw these four effects on them, get them all dialed in so it, it sounds like the best audio that you could possibly have. That's, that's it. It's actually pretty simple. Seven things to do that are quite simple and really change your audio. If you guys couldn't hear super well, throw some headphones on while you listen to this video, especially go back to that kind of before and after section and you'll, I, I think with headphones, you'll, you'll really hear a difference. And that's while the microphone is super close to my mouth, I am recording at the negative six and negative 12. If you weren't doing those things and then you weren't doing any of this, your, your audio wouldn't sound anywhere near as good as this. The before of not doing any of this and the after would be, would be really drastic. And it's a bummer because audio, audio is a thankless task. If your audio sounds great, then people just watch your video and they focus on what you're actually talking about. And if your audio sounds bad, people hear it and they go, oh, I can't watch this anymore. It's so bad to listen to. So the job of audio is to make it so good that people don't even notice that you made it so good. Because if people notice, it means you didn't you didn't do a good enough job. Yeah, audio is audio's weird. It's super important, but it's, it's weird. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, hit that like button below and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Adios. Yeah.